So another story time with Paul again. And he reminded me about one of them that is hard to forget because I had just gone through a divorce and I was hanging around with these younger guys. I was like 31, they were 25. They were all into cars and they raced snowmobiles. And they says, Paul, you're a welder. Why don't you come over? And uh, I got everything to do to make this four place snowmobile trailer. Two axles and he wanted me to weld it up. So we're at this body shop, I'm welding this up and all of a sudden the phone rings and the guy says, he, the guy that ran the shop says, hey, do you guys want to fly in an airplane? And the guy goes, yeah. I go, all right. So I'm thinking we're going to an airport, but we hop in this guy's car and we drive and we pick up this dude. And he says, wait a second, I got to get the fuel. So he's got two jerry cans. We throw them in the back of this guy's car. Then we're, you know, it's freezing cold out. And we drive to this farmer's field. There's a whole bunch of airplanes and they're just staked down. There's no hangers or anything. They're just, you know, out in the middle of this field. And there's a wind sock. And it made it look really professional, you know. And I'm like, oh man, this doesn't look good. I'm starting to feel like the big bopper or, uh, you know, um, you know, one of them rock and roll stars ready to take off. And this is a 1957 Cessna. It has never been, you know, certified probably in the last 10 years. And we get in there and he goes to start and just goes, mm, 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 and I won't start. I'm like, oh, great. Now we don't have to go. And this guy goes, well, wait a minute. Well, yeah, this is after the guy crawled up on top and the wing was above the fuselage and he poured the gas into the wings. And then it did, and he checks the oil, and the oil looked like tar. And I'm like, oh man, this thing doesn't look like it's been maintained very well. When you're up in an airplane, everything should be taken care of. So when it didn't start, I thought, oh man, this is, this is good. It's not going to run. And he goes, oh, don't worry. So he just sets the timing, and he goes out, and he's turning the prop, and it's like, and the prop goes back. And it's, it's really cold out, you know, so it doesn't want to start. And he does this a couple times, and finally, brrr, it's, it's running. And I'm like, damn. And we get going, and I'm looking. And the way they turn, you know, he just holds on the brakes. And he had the same damn brakes on it as my little go-kart, these Hearst Earhart, you know, little puck brakes. And everything on it looked so cheap, the interior was like a 57 Volkswagen. But everything has to be light on an airplane. We're getting ready and he's revving the engine and then he lets it go. And because of it being wintertime, there's all snow in this field. And when the, you'd have these low areas, there'd be slush and deeper snow and it would just slow the thing down. And there's a tree line coming up and he's, he's trying to accelerate and with four people in it, he goes, um, I don't think we're going to get off the ground with four people. He goes, one of you guys is going to have to get out. And I go, I'll get out. And this other guy goes, no, I've flown in the plane before. You guys should try it. Yeah. So he gets up. And then my other buddy, he gets riding a shotgun, and I'm sitting in the back. So we go through the whole thing again, trying to rev the engine, build up power. And he gives a gas, and we'd hit this slush, and would slow down, and he'd build up some more speed. And, the trees are coming up, they're coming up, and then there's like a hill, and the, the guy finally lifts off, and these trees are right there, and he just misses. You know, he's doing this on purpose, but he's just giving enough gas where the wheels almost touch the tops of the trees. So he's accelerating, and, and because it's such a small, you know, single engine um, airplane, it doesn't climb at too high of a angle and it's not going at too fast of a speed but I'm just looking down and slowly but surely the cars are looking like little Tonka toys and you're seeing all the tractors plow the fields and and everything's oh man it, it's starting to get scary because if the plane you know stopped running now the um, you know it's going to be a scary fall to hit the ground and he keeps climbing like that and then all of a sudden he's like letting off on the gas and the 
he's going at a steeper angle, and then this buzzer's going off, going, bam, 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 bam. you know, I'm going, what's the matter? You know, and I, I knew the thing's stalling, and he just veered down like this, and all of a sudden, full throttle. I mean, we're going as fast as that airplane would go down, and the, you know, what took so long to get up, everything was happening really fast. We were coming back to ground, and we had been drinking beer and everything. All that was like up in the, right up to here. I mean, I was ready to rolf. And then as soon as that momentum or that G-force would run out, then he bank and we just like, whoom, and we're going up like that. And the, the airplane was not designed for all the stresses that he was putting it through. And he's, you know, he did a couple of them where he, we went up and stalled and slid down and twisting rolls like this. And I'm like, come on, man, take it easy, take it easy. And he goes, oh, we do this all the time. And I was like, more to worry about because I'm thinking that this thing must be really stressed out. And then all of a sudden he shuts the thing off. He shuts it off and there's these giant... 365,000 volt tower lines and we come like floating across those things just really close and it just seems so stupid so we're coming back down and I'm thinking the ride's over you know and he just does it where the wheels just barely touched on that last hill and then he motors on again here's them trees again and wow just misses them again so, after a few more of these dips, and we'd be going this way, and all of a sudden pull back, and the wind would just, just throw you back, and all that beer that was up here is now down by my feet, and we went through this hell ride, and he does another one where he shuts it off, and he came in for a landing, and just beautifully landed, really, you know, just barely touched the ground, he comes in, and his dad shows up. I think this guy's going to get yelled at by his dad. And uh, like I said, it's freezing cold to just stand there at zero miles an hour. His dad goes, you want to go for a ride? And he says, yeah, I'm ready. So the guy puts these goggles on and he climbs up on the wing. And his dad is driving this airplane while the guy's hanging on to the wing and they come flying past us. <laughs> I was like... Do you realize how embarrassing that guy would feel? You know, it's in the paper that you lose your son, like he can't hang on good enough, and he flew off, and he goes, oh, I didn't mean to do that, you know. And we, we would talk about this story all the time, how they drove this, this airplane. And uh, the guy that was in the vehicle with me, he says, I was at their house when they took it apart, and these spars that go from the bottom of the fuselage up to the, tree, uh, up to the top of the wing, they were cracked. And they just took it all apart and they, you know, fixed it up and they used the same hardware going back together and they just rebuilt those spars. And I guess they still ride it to this day. But it was the scariest ride of my life.